What's up guys, I'm Rhett. Welcome back to Lawn Insider. In today's video, we're gonna cover how to treat yellow nut sedge, which is this weed right here. I saw these guys popping up a few weeks ago and I decided to let them grow a little bit so I could do a video over it. So that's what I did. I waited against my uh, better judgment and against my instincts. I waited and let the weeds grow a little bit and now we are going to treat them. Before we jump into the weed killing, I wanted to let y'all know that any product I talk about in today's video will be linked in the description box below. And go ahead and look for the Lawn Insider merch store link and get yourself a t-shirt all the way through July 4th. You can use the promo code, all caps, SUMMER, and you can get 20% off on a t-shirt order. All right, y'all, we're gonna do some weed treatment today. And I'm going to be honest with y'all, I don't know most of the names of the weeds that actually do crop up in the lawn. Like this? What's this, Tom? Um, those are, of course, tomatoes or soldier boy tellums. But I do know that this one is yellow nut sedge because I remember when I first got really big into lawn work, these started cropping up every once in a while in the lawn and I got on the computer like anyone else would do. And I searched, you know, a grass type weed that's been popping up in my lawn that has kind of a lime green color to it. And I ended up on the lawnform.com, which is a great resource. And if you guys want to check it out, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below as well. And I found out that this is called yellow nut sedge. And the reason yellow nut sedge is one of the more difficult weeds to control and to really eliminate is because if you just go and try to pull it, um, it's called yellow nut sedge because in the root system, there's actually these little nuts that are attached to the roots. And when you pull out the weed, those nuts break off the roots and then you get more yellow nut sedge. So really, the best option, especially once you get nut sedge plants that are this big, the best option is to treat it chemically. And that's what I'm going to do today. I do have some other broadleaf weeds that have also popped up along the edges of the property and I'll go ahead and treat those today as well. So it's kind of going to be a two for one weed treatment. Let me just start off by saying that before you use any chemical, the number one thing you can do to prevent weeds in your lawn is to just get your grass as thick as possible. So you can see that when you start mowing your Bermuda really low and it really gets thick and you really start getting that lateral growth that it's gonna really choke out the opportunity for those weeds to really get the nutrients that they need to, to really give your yard any kind of trouble. So the goal is to get your turf as healthy as possible and as thick as possible, and then you'll have a lot fewer problems with weeds. But regardless of how nice your turf is, you are occasionally gonna get a weed that pops up here and there. And when I do treat for weeds, these are the two herbicides that I recommend. This one is the main product that I use and it's called Celsius and it's going to take care of over 90% of the weeds that pop up in your yard. And then whenever you get yellow nut sedge, I recommend using sedge hammer. So today, since I'm treating nut sedge and I do have a few broadleaf weeds too that have popped up around the yard, along the fence line, places like that, I'm going to put some Celsius in there too to take care of those. I didn't mention in the overview of the two products, but I wanted to jump in and let y'all know that both the sedge hammer and the Celsius have no temperature restrictions, which in Texas is a really big deal because a lot of weed killers, you can't spray if it's above like 80 degrees outside. And in Texas over the summer, it's pretty much never under 80 degrees, or at least it seems that way. So both of these products are safe to apply even when it's really hot outside. Now, if you're having crabgrass problems in your lawn, you'll want to use a product called Quinclorac because neither of these are actually labeled to kill crabgrass. What I do to prevent crabgrass problems in my yard is make sure that I'm putting out my pre-emergent applications every year, and I put them out twice a year. I put it once at the very, pretty much end of winter, right before any of your spring lawn care starts, and then once at the very end of fall when your grass finally decides to go dormant maybe into winter in Texas as well. And I make sure personally that I'm always using a pre-emergent that has the active ingredient prodiamine. But if you don't have crabgrass problems, then these two herbicides right here are pretty much all you're gonna need. And I actually don't even own Quinclorac myself. I just have these two weed killers. As far as my instrument for application today, I'm just gonna use this spray bottle because I'm treating such a small area 
I mean, this is the definition of spot treatment here because it's such a, a tiny area. I'm going to make such a small amount of solution that I'm going to use this spray bottle here. That way I'm not wasting my product. All right, so hopefully you can see the markings on the bottle here, but today I'm just going to make eight ounces of solution. So I'm going to make a really, really small batch, and that's going to require me to do some math off of the rates it gives me on the label. So let's go check out the labels. Okay, so I went and looked at the labels, and I got the rate per gallon, and a gallon is 128 ounces. So Sedgehammer wanted me to put down 0.9 grams of the product per gallon which is 128 ounces, and Celsius wanted me to put down 3.2 grams of the product per gallon, per 128 ounces. Now, it's really good that we can get those numbers, but we're actually only putting down 8 ounces of product, and the way we're going to figure out how to go from 128 ounces to 8 ounces is just a little cross multiplication. So for Sedgehammer right here, you have to multiply 0.9 by 8, okay, and that gives you 7.2, and then, 0.9 by 8, and then you divide by 128, so divided by 128, all right, so for Sedgehammer, we're going to have to put down a total of 0 0.056 grams, and I'm going to go ahead and write that right here, 0 0.056 grams, all right, which is very, very, very little product. And then for Celsius, you're going to multiply 3.2 by 8. So 3.2 times 8. And that gives me 25.6. And then I have to divide that by 128. And that gives me 0.2 grams. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down as well. 0.2 grams. All right. So now we know that I'm going to have to put 0.56 grams of the Sedgehammer into my 8 ounces of water, and we're going to have to put 0.2 grams of the Celsius in my 8 ounces of water. All right, I'm hoping I didn't lose y'all with the math right there. It's really not that hard. It's just a matter of finding the rates on the label and then doing a little cross multiplication. Now I'm going to measure out the right amount of product, put it in the 8 ounces, and go spray. Okay, I did pour the 8 ounces of water into my spray bottle already, and I added a little bit of surfactant. Surfactant is basically soap, and it's just going to allow the weed killers that I add to the water to stick to the plant better. So that's the purpose of surfactant. All right, so now I'm using my gram scale right here to make sure that I'm putting down 0 0.056 grams of the Sedgehammer and 0.2 grams of the Celsius into my 8 ounces of water. All right, so I'm going to use this little small container to actually put the product in to weigh it. The first thing you have to do is put it on the scale, and then you have to subtract the weight of this from whatever you're weighing, and the wind is actually messing with it right now. So it's 6.71 grams. I'm going to 6.73 grams. I'm going to click this T-A-R-E button right here, and that zeroes it out, and now I'm at zero. So I'm just going to take my sedge hammer, which comes with this small little measuring cup, and normally, if you're doing a full gallon of solution, it's just one scoop of the measuring cup. So, but we're doing eight ounces, so it's going to be very, very, a very, very small amount of solution. So I don't even want to put too much in the measuring cup before I even weigh. All right, so now we're going to come in to weigh it, and we want it to be around 0.05 or 0.06. And I'm just going to try to do a very little amount at a time here. All right, we're already at 0 0.06, 0 0.05, so I'm going to add a little bit more, 0 0.05, 0 0.07. Yes, science! Okay, 0.07 is fine. You can see that there's only that much um, actual product when I'm weighing it out, so you're using a very, very, very small amount of product whenever you are treating for weeds when you're using Sedgehammer or Celsius for that matter. All right, I already dumped the Sedgehammer product into the water, so we already are good on the Sedgehammer. Now I'm going to weigh out the Celsius. Celsius needs 0.2 grams of product for the 8 ounces of water that we're putting down. So I'm going to use the same measuring cup, the Sedgehammer measuring cup. And let's see here. We need 0.2 grams, so again, this is not going to be much. That's 0.15 already. 
0.2 right there. All right, so we're already perfect. So now, again, you can see that we're only using that much product for this 8-ounce solution that we're making. And I'm going to go ahead and dump it into the weed killer water here. And now I have 8 ounces of weed killer that should kill pretty much any weed that pops up into my lawn. All right, so now I'm just going to take the solution and shake it up a little bit since it's in a hand sprayer. And then now I'm going to take it around the backyard and then go spray the weeds that I have. Okay, now I'm just going to spray the product on the weeds. Um, it's important that before you spray this product and after that you don't mow at least this spot for a while because the more surface area you have on these weeds, the more weed killer that they're going to be able to soak up. So right now I'm just going to spray. And really, I'm probably going to do a little bit of overkill because I made 8 ounces of this stuff and I don't have 8 ounces worth of weeds to treat. But you can see I even have like a broadleaf weed right there that I'll go ahead and, and spray. And this is the main area in the yard where I have any weeds just because I let these pop up just so I can make a video for y'all. But now I'm just going to kind of walk around the perimeter of the yard and spray any more stragglers that I have along the fence line. So I just walked around the perimeter of the yard and I sprayed any other weeds that I saw. That patch that was on video there was by far the worst spot in the lawn but like I said I wanted to let that grow up so I could show y'all a video over it. Every product that I use in today's video is child and pet friendly. Just make sure that after you apply it you let it dry and then you're good to go. And I'll make sure that I give y'all several updates and I will not put this video out until I put those updates in with the main video. Well here they are guys you can see that there has been pretty substantial amount of yellowing taking place if you look at the blades of the weeds themselves and they are pretty wilted. You can look over here at this broadleaf one that I sprayed over here and see the same thing. It's pretty wilted, kind of turning yellow so you can see that the weed killer is taking its toll on the nut sedge. Um, when you look at the grass around, you can see a little bit of yellowing, but nothing too substantial. Remember, I went pretty heavy on this area when I sprayed the other day, so it might have a little effect on the grass, but these are selective herbicides, so they're going to target the weed and not really affect your grass too much. So anyway, that's the three-day update, and I'll come back and give you all the one-week update, and then I will wrap this video up. All right, y'all, so I actually missed the one-week update, so we're at like nine days right now, but you can see that the weeds have met their demise. And again, um, you know, just wanted to point out that I did go heavy, so that's why you see these frayed yellow tips on the grass blades here. But they'll come back strong, and uh, the lawn will be 100% in no time. But anyway, I just wanted to show y'all the herbicide that I use to kill yellow nut sedge and I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video right now. I hope y'all learned something today. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're enjoying the content and you want to see more, hit that red subscribe button below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave those in the comments section below. I'll see y'all again next week. Lawn Insider out.